So I think it's time to wrap this project up. We've come a long way. We've made a lot of parts. Um, let's put them all together and, and see how it works. Um, first thing I did, it, first thing I'd like to mention is I went over this, uh, the body, and I, uh, with a piece of sandpaper on the surface plate, I used 400 uh, silicon carbide sandpaper and just cleaned up all the machining marks on it to make it look pretty. You know, you don't have to do that, but it makes it, you know, it's aesthetically it makes it look nicer. And uh, after, after that, I, I just ran a scotch bite over it just to blend all the uh, machining marks in, and it looks pretty good. Um, so I did that, and uh, I made a little change on the drawing. The original drawing, I had a, uh, a set screw and a uh, dowel pin here. Well, that's, that's fine. It would work fine, but if you ever wanted to take it apart, it might be a real pain to get that dowel pin out. So I replaced the set screw and dowel pin with just a longer set screw that was turned down to eighth inch on the end to fit into the uh, groove in our spindle. I think that'll work out nicer. So I changed the drawing on the, on the website. You can get a, a new Rev-D drawing off. And I made another change on the drawing. Unfortunately, when I was putting this thing together, I realized I screwed up originally when I uh, modeled the part or the assembly, and I didn't leave quite enough room in this slot for the thimble. So when you go to slide the thimble in the slot, it's going to bottom out before you can get the uh, spindle started. So I had to make this slot a little bit deeper. It gets kind of close to these holes, but uh, um, I think it'll be okay. It's, it's okay on this one. I, I not only made the slot deeper, I, on this one I also reduced the diameter on the knurl a little bit just so I wouldn't have to get so close to these holes. You might be able to get away with just doing the slot. Otherwise, just, just knock the knurl down a little bit and, and you know re -knurl it. Not, not that big of a deal, but unfortunately those things happen. Um, but it's all fixed now on the website. What I did is I made this the overall width of this body a sixteenth of an inch wider. Okay, So that gives me a, a lot more room in this area to make the slot deeper, provide pl plenty of clearance for the thimble. So that's, that's on there. If you haven't started yet, update the latest rev on these parts on the body and the assembly and you'll, you'll get all those changes. All the drawings on the website are up to date now. So let's put this thing together. Let's see, what do we want to do first? Um, well, here's that, here's that modified web, or what, modified set screw. All it is is just an, eighth, an 832 set screw. And I just turned down the end to an eighth inch diameter by about an eighth inch long, okay? And that screws into this bottom tapped hole here and engages the, the slot in the spindle, okay. So I think uh, should use some uh, thread locking compound on that so it uh, stays put once you put it in, so it doesn't move around on you. So I just put a little drop of uh, locking thread lock compound on it. Then you only have to adjust it once. If you can get the darn Loctite compound to work. Alright, doesn't take much. And then just run your set screw in till the uh, the eighth inch diameter bottoms out and then back it off about an eighth of a turn. You want to have uh, you want the spindle to be free to move axially, but you don't want it to rotate. So that's that's what this pin does. Okay, now you can uh, put the thimble in. And this thimble has a, uh, a ball, a spring-loaded ball, in this eighth inch hole here. And what that does is it provides a little resistance on the thimble so it doesn't move around when you don't want it to. So just all it is is an eighth inch diameter spring, about quarter inch long, and I just had a half inch one on hand, so I uh, cut it in half. Hey, working with small springs and balls now, it's it's kind of good to have some spares anyway, because usually they end up shooting across the shop. Got a hundred balls to work with, so I don't have to worry about losing those. If anybody needs any balls, here they are. These guys, I got the balls from McMaster Car. 
and probably the spring came from there too. I think I called out McMaster car part numbers, yeah, for the ball and the spring. So we'll just, yeah, there it goes right, there it goes already. So we'll just put the spring in and a ball. And just push it, push it down and slide it together. Then you can start your spindle. See, so now it moves, it moves easily, but then it stays put, so it doesn't won't move around on you when you're using it on the machine. All right, so there's that, and all that's left is the clamping plate. Okay, this just goes on here like this, and our two hardened square head clamping bolts. Screw into it from the top. And that's that's it. That's the carriage stop. There are some uh, get some light on it here. It turned out pretty pretty nice looking. Um, I think next thing I'll do is I'll well, to finish this up, I'll, I'll run over to my dad's house and we'll throw it on his atlas lathe and I'll, I'll give you a short demonstration on, on how you use this thing. You know, what, what good is it? What, do, what does it do for you? So, we'll do that. I'll, I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, so here's my... My dad's old Atlas lathe. Um, I built this thing up for him years ago, and uh, this is the lathe I built the original, um, the original carriage stop for, which is this one. And then I redesigned it a bit to what we have today. Okay, a few few improvements. I what did I do well. I turned the uh, I turned the spindle around so the keyway is on the bottom now instead of on the front like it was originally. I uh, I switched the key the thimble around so the numbers well that's so the numbers are on are facing the uh, the carriage instead of on the back side like they were originally and I added these nifty uh, clamp bolts so anyway dad's gonna get a new carriage stop out of the out of the deal because I don't have any use for it <laughs> um, of course, when I came over here today unannounced and told him I was going to make a video on his lathe, he panicked and ran over here and started cleaning up real fast. So, if it's not clean enough for you, he's the one to blame. And I, can't I, had, find I, had, I had nothing to do with it. I can't find your glasses. <laughs> All right, so, what do you do with a carriage stop? Well, probably the easiest, uh, the best demo I can show you is if you have a piece of stock that you want to face off to a certain length. Carriage stop is what you use for that. You put the stock in, face one end off, and you put that face end back in the chuck, against the chuck, like so. Lock it down. Okay, now you can uh, face the other end off. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now it's all cleaned up, but I have no idea um, what size it is. So let's, this is where the carriage stop comes into effect. Um, let's uh, set the thing on zero, line the zero up with the mark, 
put it against the side of the carriage and lock it down. Trying to reach around the camera here, it's kind of difficult, but I think we'll figure it out. Okay, lock it down good. So now we're set on zero here. Now I'm going to back my tool out a little bit and we'll just run the uh, carriage against the stop, hence the name carriage stop. So you got a nice hard stop now. So we can run it against the stop, turn the lathe on, and take a cleanup cut on the end of our part. And then we can take the part out, measure it, put it back in. It'll be in the same location relative to the tool. So then we can just make a movement on our carriage stop to take, take as much stock off as we need. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. So you can use your compound rest to move the tool in to get your cleanup cut. There you go, just till, it's, just till it uh, scratches the surface of the part. Alright, now we can shut it off. Take the part out, take it over, measure it. Let's say we had ten thousandths to go. We have to take ten more thousandths off, so now we can put the part back in the chuck. Move our uh, carriage stop ten thousandths. Now we bump the carriage against the stop, and we'll take an additional ten thousandths off the part. I always like to hold hold the carriage against it. I'm taking a cut like this so it doesn't move away in the middle of the cut. So there we go. And now parts face to length, exactly to length. We, and that's, that's what you need the carriage stop for. If you don't have it, you're, you're guessing. You have to, uh, each time you have to go through and touch off the part with a tool to, to uh, take an additional cut. You know, you have to take it out, measure it, put it back in, touch it off again, and that leaves room for error. With the carriage stop, it, you don't have to worry about that. You take a cleanup cut on it, measure it, put it back in, it's going to be exactly the same place as it was before. And then you can move your carriage over whatever distance you need using the dial on the carriage stop. So you can, that's, you know, the carriage stop works axially, axially on the part. It, uh, you can face a part to length. If you want to cut a shoulder to a you know, a specific distance from the end of the part. You can take a cleanup cut at the end of your part, move your carriage stop over as far as you want to cut the shoulder, and go ahead and, and whittle out a shoulder, um, and it'll be an exact distance from the end of the part, whatever you set your carriage stop to. If you want to cut a groove in the part, okay, you can touch off the end of the part with your grooving tool or your parting tool, uh, move over whatever distance you need to using the carriage stop, and cut your groove. Lots of things you can use it for. Um, if you want to go farther, you know, if you want to cut a feature farther than the carriage stop will reach, you can use a, an additional spacer between the stop and the uh, and the carriage. Let's say you had a, you wanted to cut a, a shoulder one and a quarter inches over, or one inch ten thousand something over an inch. Okay, what you could do is you could put a one inch spacer in here, a gauge block or something, you know, a micrometer standard, something known one inch, is one inch wide, run your carriage up against it, take the stop out, you know, pick up your, uh, pick up the end of your part just like we did for facing. Then you can take the one inch spacer out and add on whatever amount you needed, more than one inch. Then when you move over, you're an inch plus whatever your carriage stop reads. So you can extend the range of the carriage stop that way. Um, let's see. That's about all there is to a carriage stop, right? It's just, you know, it's just gives you control over how much metal you're taking off from the end of a part. So it's, it's a pretty handy tool. Um, I use them all the time. Um, so it's def definitely worth building. It's a lot, you know, it's a lot of work, but you learn, learn a lot building the thing and you get to use it after you build it. So that's all I have today. Um, Probably the next project, as I mentioned on the comments, I think I'm going to get started designing 
that uh, knurling tool that I, I used to cut this knurl on the thimble. So that'll be the next one in line. Hope you had fun with this one. I'll see you then.